Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2! It's gonna be a game between Hero Marine and Showtime from Katowice. On Ephemeron, the latter edition from the group stages, bottom right hand corner, we have the red Protoss player Showtime hailing from Germany. And in the top left, it is the fellow countryman. The German Terran player, Hero Marine. So these two players know each other very well. They play against each other all the time on the European ladder. And so I'm pretty darn sure this is going to be an excellent match here on Ephemeron. I'm not entirely sure the last time I cast a game between the two players, but they have risen in power since the last time I have cast them. Hero Marine has an incredible streak going here in 2020, and Showtime has an incredible streak going as well. Probe scouting here is Showtime. Just a gateway expand, no big deal. One racks expand here from Hero Marine. Very safe, very solid, especially against an opponent that is either Protoss or Terran. Uh, hmm, how do I say that? If you're Terran, it's safe against Protoss, and if you're Protoss, it's safe against Terran. And safe against Zerg as well. <laughs> a little bit of probe harassment here. They are used to this by now. And let's see here. Second gas. And, you know, a second pylon after the cybernetics core and things will be happy. First showtime. No big deal. Blocking the attempt to expand here on the low ground for Hero Marine. I mean, at the very least, he could just build it on another low, like build it right here and then just lift it and land it. But he'd rather not do that. I wonder what the... Like, I really wonder what the the formula is there, right? How long until how long your uh, command center is being blocked until you feel like it makes more sense to just plant it somewhere else and lift and land it, right? There has to be a threshold somewhere. Anyway, Reaper moving out across the map. The Reaper's name is Isabel. Isabel was a cute dog, the mayor's loyal assistant, and bored out of her mind. She wanted some excitement in her life, and when she was out shopping for a cooking game, she accidentally bought Doom Eternal. The game awoke her latent bloodlust, so she volunteered for the Reaper program so she could rip and tear until it was done. That's right, the Isabel Doom crossover is one of the better memes of 2020 for sure, as both Animal Crossing 2 and Doom Eternal were released on the same day. You would not think they have a lot in common, but surprisingly the internet made them have a lot in common, because that's what the internet does. <laughs> Regardless, what are we doing, man? Things are great, blah blah blah, got a factory up here for Hero Marine, his double gas is churning. And things don't get really interesting until that factory is done and until, well, the Twilight Council is done here for Showtime. We'll see what he's going to do with it. Probably Blink. You generally want to open up with Blink against Terran. It just allows you to defend fairly easily and maybe even get aggressive if you want to. Isabel taking shots from a Stalker is not good. Where's that Adept? Oh, the Adept is up here trying to get some scouting off, but not really much to see other than the presence of the Barracks, which obviously you're aware of. KD8 Charge does save the Reaper's life there. That Reaper was dead. It was within range of that Stalker catching up to it and killing it, but the KD-8 charge knocked it back. Beautiful play from the Hero Marine. Looks like one of my drops here from Hero Marine would be my assumption on the opening. A very common Terran opening versus Protoss. We did chase the Adept away. She doesn't have any kills whatsoever. The Reaper makes it home and is healed back up thanks to the presence of the combat drugs churning through his system. Probably not good for him in the long term, but you know what? It, I mean, how long do Reapers live, honestly? Trying to fight against... Oh, are you killing that? Oh, actually helping. Maybe going to help kill that Hellion. The Adept is trying to kill both, which seems a little bit greedy. But, oh, does get the Reaper. Can't get the Hellion. That would have been amazing. That would have been so good. Third base coming up for Showtime. Warping in on the low ground. Feeling pretty safe to do that. Recognizing the timing on the expansion from Hero Marine. And it is going to be a Widow Mine drop. Marine production continuing. Third CC coming in from Hero Marine. Pretty darn standard play from both these players thus far. That's why we have an Observer is for the presence of Widow Mines. And getting additional gateways as the third base is coming up. You just want to keep up with that stuff if you're Protoss. Keep making them gateways. So Hellion's still alive, which is nice. Can actually see if there's any th attacks coming up this way. We'll probably die in the meantime, but at least we'll get some scouting information off. Raven in production from Hero Marine back home. I do love a good Raven play in any matchup, really. I feel like Ravens are great against Zerg just for helping clear creep, and they're great against Protoss for auto turret harass and interference matrix and anti armor missile, and they're good against Terran for all the same reasons they're good against Protoss. So, Kachachaka, stalkers say no. Widow Mine drops not allowed in my house. Showtime is on top. 
of his game right now. This pylon created specifically to scout for this kind of stuff. If you're getting dropped a lot as Protoss, pylon here on this map, right? It will help you. It will help you see stuff coming a lot. Look at this probe, too. This has got to be a scouting probe, right? Charge, actually. Charge coming in. Hold up. Did I? Okay, so Blink is done, and now Charge is on the way. So, yeah. Showtime doing the normal stuff. I thought for a second he skipped Blink, but then I realized I hadn't looked at the production tab for a minute, and that makes a lot more sense. Over... Overlord. Hmm. Observer comes scouting into the Terran base, sees... Multiple barracks, sees a third command center, says, all right, my third base is pretty safe at this point. I can hold whatever attacks come my way. So what I'm going to do is have a bunch of stalkers, again, with Blink. Maybe Chrono Boost out, uh, not really Chrono Boosting out the charge. Using the Chrono Boost, it looks like, on the Nexus is more than anything else. Although, did just throw up a Chrono. Oh, well, what's the Immortal? I don't know, man. That's a pretty big Marine count. Now, the stalkers are going to try to kite and... Just prevent the Terran player from getting here sooner. It goes back to Brood War, though. What is... Ah, auto turret harassed. Six probes killed? Oh, it was the Widow Mines. The Widow Mine drop got six kills. Dang, son. Auto turret harassed, not getting any probes, but the, the Widow Mines escape with their lives. Hero Marine, the multi-pronged harass is disgusting here. Really is. Stalkers trying to get that tank. Can't quite do it. Actually, moving right on in with the Zealot, who will have charge in 10 seconds. It doesn't really matter if actually the enemy can't run away if you have charge or not. So this is working. Can they get the tank? No. Two tanks. Very, very injured, but not dead. There you go. Sniping them both. The Immortal gets one. The Stalkers get the other. This Immortal going to die to Marines, which is definitely worth it, keeping that tank count low. And this takes back to Brood War, man. Little Terran pushes would get harassed. Is he Widow Mines? Still Widow Mine stuff in here, guys. Jeez. Hero Marine winning the engagement at the front, minus the tanks. He is heading home because his tanks are dead. But then also getting the Widow Mine drops off at the same time. Just Hero Marine playing this so very well, but really well held by Showtime. He didn't have charge, so he improvised using force fields to trap the Terran army here. And then just walking the Zealots up to them. Now that they have charge, they'll close the distance very quickly. But without any follow-up support there, that is way too many Marines for Hero Marine, and Showtime is backing out. All right, so, so far, so good. Out of Showtime. And I gotta say, I'm thinking of my friend Fatty of Fatty TV. He's a Protoss streamer out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash FattyTV, and he's always struggling against Terran, and he likes watching my cast to get inspiration of how to beat Terran players as Protoss in standard games. And this is looking pretty good, man. Charge lots, blink stalkers, immortals, and eventually you want to be getting into splash damage. So, Robotic Spain now starting up from Showtime. The Terran player did have some Zealous Warp into his main base here. Yeah, get a couple SCVs, but the Terran, you know, he's got production at home. So you can just warp in defense for the most part. Although that Marauder is going to die. Those Zealots aren't getting much done. Trying to drop in over here. The natural baseball player pretty much staying at home at this stage. Widow Mine getting a decent hit on those Zealots. But Sentry, ooh, Stalkers do take down that Medivac. This Zealot is still alive with five kills. He's finally going to die to this Marauder, but it takes so many hits from Marauders to do that. And it looks like Hero Marines cleaned it up, and it looks like Showtime has done the same thing over here. So both players on three bases. And really not starting to get the splash damage until about eight and a half minutes. Here is Showtime. He's working on extended thermal lance. He's getting another robotics facility for additional Colossus. I really like that versus a bio style here. Colossus is pretty great, unless the Marauder count is too high. But he just, he just, again, more Zealots. Taking down a supply depot, blinding Hero Marine to the presence of drops in that area. And then dropping, swing. On top of those zealots a little bit. Raven. Fighting hard. War Prism not having the greatest time. And in fact will get burned down. Oh, it's alive. That's a recall out of there. Can it get saved? What positioning by Showtime. He knew exactly where to go to. Where Marines could not hit him on the left side or the right side. That turret, if that had finished, that would have been bad. But it didn't. So no worries. That's another Widow Mine drop at nine and a half minutes. Who does another Widow Mine drop at nine and a half minutes? Oh, gosh. Uh, eight, ten probes been killed here. Just non-standard, thirteen non-standard shenanigans right now. Out of Hero Marine. Who expects a Widowmine drop at ten minutes? I certainly do not. Widowmine trying to get 
in here and Burrow bef No, it's not going to happen. Zealot chases him down and kills it. Meanwhile, here, Marine, big scary attack. Coming in Showtime's attempt at a fourth base. My attempt might. It is. Uh, I mean, it is done. It is finished. And it is going to die. There's really no saving it right now. Extend the Thermal Lance is done in 10 seconds, but that's too long, and the Nexus is going to die. Meanwhile, attack coming up to Hero Marine's third base with Zealots and into the natural base with Zealots. This is a little bit more standard. You do expect the Protoss to constantly be sending Zealots into your mineral lines if you're a Terran player. So this a little bit better responded to, I would say, out of Hero Marine. Actually heading home. It's like I killed that fourth base. You know what? That's a job well done. I don't really want to fight against these Colossus. Plus, Zealots keep warping into my main. That warp prism does die to the Viking. That's why you make Vikings. Well, not a lot of Vikings. Unless your opponent's going Colossus, then make a lot of Vikings to deal with those Colossus. And you'll feel pretty good about yourself. Trying to retake this fourth base of Showtime does not have the resources to do so, though. And it's, in fact, making Disruptors. So Disruptor Colossus here. Ghost Academy on the way from Hero Marine. Kind of loving that. Free Zealot. <laughs> Free Zealot. And a fourth base landing for Hero Marine. This should be a planetary. Fourth bases and up for the professionals are planetary fortresses. They need those three CCs, the three orbital CCs. Yep, there's that planetary in order to keep up economically with both Protoss and Zerg. But DT's man, showtime. You just never let the Terran player rest. That is the strategy here. Never, not once. Look at him focusing the wounded SCVs. Oh, this is great. I guess it doesn't really matter. He's one-shotting them anyway. Oh my gosh. So ends up with getting seven kills. Stay out of the range of the auto turret. Ah, oh, could have maybe survived a little bit longer if he'd stayed out of the range of the auto turret. But instead, nope. Tries to attack it and dies. Never attack into auto turrets directly is what I say. This Dark Templar running about. Gets his first two kills in the middle of the map. Really forces Hero Marine to focus on something else other than trying to kill the Protoss for a minute. Uh, see, Raven for detecting cloaked stuff like creep tumors and like Dark Templar. Stalkers fighting and then blinking back. See, just trying to delay this push, but there are no tanks to siege. Ooh, nice anti-armor missile connection there. Disruptor does manage to get back into the ranks and does not die, which is a huge deal. Keeping those disruptors alive is massive. And try to pre-split his unit so the disruptors don't do as much damage to them. Nice EMPs catching the sentries in that situation. The Viking trying to snap, snipe down the Colossus from the right side. But it looks like Showtime is just winning every one of these engagements, even not really getting great connections on the disruptors at all. But the disruptors are generally staying alive at this point. And Showtime manages to hold that off. I wonder if the pre-split for here, Marine, hurt him a little bit. I wonder if he had the full force of his uh, DPS just firing away here instead of kind of hanging back in the different areas. It might have gone differently for him, but he didn't want to lose his whole army to stripper shots either. So it's tough. It is a tough, tough situation that he found himself in there. Disruptor play at the highest level in the hands of someone who's excellent can be very hard for Terran to deal with. Even, again, they're pretty good at splitting, yes. But you have to be paying attention to it constantly. Or bad things will happen. So it's thought about going into the natural, and then there was a welcoming committee, and they decided to head on home. Enhanced Shockwave is coming in right now. Love that upgrade for Terran. It's really what makes EMP more viable than it's ever been, I think, is the extra radius on that Shockwave, on that uh, EMP ability. He recalls the Disruptors home. One of them dies, because the Disruptors can't run, but the Zealots and the Stalkers can kind of run. Because actually, Zealots right now, with speed, are faster than stimmed Marines on the ground. Zealots just, okay, getting a ghost is a major victory for those Zealots there. Well done indeed. Showtime's fourth base, or fifth base rather, warping in right now. Trying to stay ahead of the Terran player in economy. And I see you, War Prism. I see you over on this left side. The DT and three Zealots in you, you have some ideas. All right, mm, defending, defending the fifth base. What just killed a bunch of probes? I don't know, but Hero Marine's walking right in the natural base of Showtime. And manages to take down the robotics bay, a, a robo facility, and causing some more problems. The Nexus down to their fifth base going down. Zealous DT is coming into Hero Marine's natural base. 
What a match this is right now. Marine for Hero Marine and Marauders inside the main base trying to kill what they can, but suddenly DTs are around and he doesn't have orbital scans available. So he has to get out. Nice blink forward trying to pick off some of those Metamax. Does get one of them. Nice disruptor hit. Holy cannoli. What a big time hit there on one of these disruptors that ends up with a bunch of 11 kills on you. 13 SCVs do die to the combined DT Zealot Harassment. Trying to drop here at the fifth bases here, Marine. Both players are just at the top of their game right now. They have both killed so many workers. 41 SCVs have died. 35 probes have died. An absolute bloodbath of epic proportions in the first 15 minutes. In the first 15 minutes of this match. Good heavens. Whoa. EMP is catching a couple zealots there. That could have been a lot worse. They were going to die anyway, I really feel like. Showtime trying to replace his fifth base. A fifth CC is done for Hero Marine. And here's your engagement. Catching the disruptors out, sniping one before it can actually fire, which is pretty fantastic. And then trying to finish off this Nexus, but forced to engage by Showtime, forcing the issue. Running away from the disruptor shots. That was a fairly big one. That was a fairly big disruptor shot. Woof. Problematic for sure. DT going after Hero Marine's attempt at a fifth base. He will kill this. Given the time, but he's not going to be given the time. Because, well... There's a scan available and the DT goes down. Nice EMPs again, but Hero Marine says, I just don't have enough. I don't have enough to engage right now with these disruptors. <laughs> Marine Marauder Marine down there to that disruptor shot. Hero Marine just trying to find damage, trying to find whatever he can kill. Killing Pylons in the middle of nowhere, great. Scouting Pylons dead. Killing some Zealot, fantastic too. Zealot DT attack up here at this planetary, but the repair is enough and there are no Immortals. So that's not going to go well for the Protoss. He is forced to flee. Good heavens, this game though. Goodbye, Medivac. By that I mean you're totally fine. All with your 3 HP somehow, some way. Both players' fifth bases are alive, if bruised, at the moment. Uh, did he replace his Robotics Bay and Robo right here? Wow, he really was okay with the Robotics Bay being at the front lines and easily sniped, I guess. That's cool. Zealots coming on in. Not doing super well for themselves. Nice snipe on the Medivac, though. I've always said, you can pretty much deal with a Bio-Terran player by killing their medevacs for the most part. That is the force multiplier. That is what makes the Marines and Marauders so scary. Nice EMPs. Was that two separate EMPs at the same time on that ghost? Is that is that, that much of an instant cast? I thought there was a cooldown on that. I don't know. Big old drop coming into the natural where there's like a Dark Templar, but warping in some units to try and deal with this. they are DTs, but there are scans available. Colossus pops out at the perfectly possible moment. For Showtime and chases this away. Medivac dies with units on board. Sixth base coming in for Showtime in the bottom left hand base. It's 166 to 180 supply. This is an insanely good PVT. I told you these guys are excellent and they are proving as such here today. Man, I, I mean, look, I mean, neither player maxed out here. Another player has been maxed out today, I don't think. Every time they approach. The 200 supply limit. They have an engagement, and both players lose a ton of stuff. Nobody's really rolled over the other player here today. Trying to march into the front door again, but this time there happen to be some units defending for Showtime, so that goes better for him. And Showtime just kind of rebuffing Hero Marine's attempts to do much. The EMPs, though, have been consistently good out of Hero Marine, which if you're struggling against Protoss's Terran, learn how to use EMPs, and I guarantee your win rate will go up. Just, it weakens everything Protoss has. It makes them that much easier to burn down with your remaining army. Now look, if all you have are some ghosts and your EMPs are perfect and there's nothing left to burn down the Protoss army further, well, sure, you're going to have a bad time. I'm just saying, like, macro and use ghosts. See, like, this ghost getting hacked up by zealots, and every, every ghost that dies is a major win for Showtime. Look at this army response back here, because the attack is over this way. Hero Marine did leave some of his forces to try to save the planetary, but no... And that's what happens when you have a million stalkers in the mix. Nice snipe on that ghost. 19 SCVs have gone down. This guy single-handedly has nine of those kills and is trying to take down this orbital command. Showtime suddenly up 187 supply to 138 supply. Hero Marine is in a rough, tough way right now. He only has 45 workers remaining. 
If he can kill this base, he can keep this going. The Vikings trying to snipe down the Colossus. Too many Stalkers on the ground. The blink forward from Showtime is incredibly aggressive. The <laughs> EMPs from the right side and the low ground on the Ghosts are super fantastically good as well. But no. Hero Marine taps out and Showtime is your victor. Does that feel a little bit premature to anybody else? Regardless, hit that like button if you enjoyed that match because that was non-stop. Yeah, so EMP is over here. Very nicely done. But army supply is 99 to 72. Hero Marine effectively has one mining base, which is not ideal at all. Yeah, I mean, he's on four bases, and Showtime is on... He's got two mining bases. Well, three if you count this one, and this one is a fresh one that Hero Marine does not have access to at all. He doesn't have a fresh base whatsoever. So he can't kill the Colossus. He means he keeps trying it too with the Stalkers. So he knew. He saw the writing on the wall, and he tapped right on out. Woo! I feel like that was nonstop. I really do. <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous game. That was so much fun. <sighs> so much fun. So yeah, end of the day, 35,000 resources lost for Hero Marine. I mean, that's 132 Marines. That is 27 Ghosts. That is a planetary. That is 13 medevacs. He has five remaining. That's a huge metric. 76 marauders went down too. And then Showtime. It wasn't Storm. It was Colossus and Disruptor in this game. One Archon. I guess they did have three at the end of the game that were useful. But ends up losing five of his Colossus. Only two remaining. I guess maybe he remained a better job killing his Colossus in that final battle than I thought he did. Lost five Disruptors, four of them remaining at the end of the game. I mean, this was a bloodbath. Two Nexuses down, too. It's hard to lose 46 probes and two Nexuses against an Elite Terran player and win, but that's what Showtime did here today. Just a fantastic positioning. He only really ever lost that one base to lack of attention. This one down. This one down here to the south. After that, he did a great job babysitting them. I'm not sure. I don't. Wow. Hero Marine didn't know about this. Hang on. Hero Marine didn't even know about this base. Oh, Vision, though. Vision is so important. And yeah, you can see with these 22 SCVs down and losing that fifth base, the income just goes whoop right there for showtime. It's been up and down the whole game. Hero Marine doing okay. And then suddenly, ka-chunk. Into the abyss. <sighs> Incredible. All right. Well, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.